Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back. We are here for another edition of the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And I, yes, I am still your host, Ryan Basulto. I don't know why I'm talking so weird. Maybe it's in the air. But it's a gloomy day in Los Angeles, to say the least. There was a lot of traffic, a little bit of rain. So... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just gave you an insight of my life. I know you don't care about my life. All we care about is becoming the top fantasy champions in next year's fantasy football draft. Today we are going to go over the quarterback pyramid I have. It's going to start from good, then they're going to be great, then premium, then elite. The Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allens. Yes, I know good is good, but in this case, good is <laughs> the bottom ranking of it. So I'm just saying it. To let you know the grading scale. Because I know it's kind of confusing when I say, hey look, I don't want to get a quarterback in fantasy until the 10th round. And I know you guys are thinking, well, what if I don't want to? And what if I want to get these? Well, then I'm going to kind of put these guys in brackets. Like I would say good is probably 14th to 16th rounds. um, 14th, 16th round. Great is like 10th to 14th round depending on how optimistic you are. Premium is about 8 to 10 And then Elite is anywhere from the first round all the way on. So, we're going to go over that. And we're going to go over some news. Calvin Benjamin's a tight end now. Is everyone just becoming a tight end? Blake Bortles on the Green Bay Packers. Does that mean the end for Aaron Rodgers and that fantasy offense? Travis Etienne, is he going to be the next Percy Harvin? And who is the quarterback of the Chicago Bears? We want to know who's throwing to Allen Robinson. We're not drafting him unless we know. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over my two previews at the end of the show as well. Over the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson and that heavy offense. The number one rush offense in the NFL. And we are going to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals to close out the AFC North. We've already done the previews of the AFC East. We've done previews of the NFC East. And now we're about to close out the AFC North, as we already done the Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. But first, we are going to go into my quarterback pyramid. Let's start off with the good. We have Andy Dalton, Justin Fields, whoever is the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals. We don't know, but we know Andy Dalton did decent last year on the Dallas football, on the Dallas Cowboys. Sorry, I had to make sure he wasn't on the Washington team. (laughs) Can say that old logo get in trouble. Andy Dalton averaged 13 points per game last year. Eh, 143 fantasy points, finishing as the 31st quarterback in the NFL. Is Allen Robinson, which helps him. Dave Montgomery, great in the backfield. Cole Kemet, Darnell Mooney. Allen Robinson is probably going to still finish as a top 15 receiver, just not as high on him until Justin Fields hits the field. So we don't know who that quarterback is, but Andy Dalton's in the good range, the bottom tier of my quarterback list. I would wait to not even draft him. I would let him fall to the waivers. Another quarterback, similar in ranking, Sam Darnold. Last year, he was on the New York Jets, which I know is the worst franchise in the NFL. Adam Gase, one of the worst coaches in the NFL, is fired, but now he is on 
the Carolina Panthers, and he has weapons like Robbie Anderson, who's a top 15 receiver, DJ Moore, who's a top 20 receiver. They just added another receiver in the draft. They have Christian McCaffrey, who's one of the best premier running backs in the NFL. If you have the second or third pick, I would get Christian McCaffrey no matter what. First pick, for sure, Alvin Kamara. He's a man over there. But this is the running back show. This is the quarterback show. I would let Sam Darnold fall out of the draft again. There's a lot of great options I still have to mention. He's someone who's good. Someone who's good. Someone you could get as a waiver wire pickup. That's the best you're going to do. Derek Carr. Derek Carr, probably one of the better quarterbacks on this good list. Had 281 fantasy points last year. Finished 13th. Ranked as a quarterback. Averaging 17.5 points per game. Derek Carr is great, but he has no elite receiver. His best elite receiver is Darren Waller. And after they double him, who is it? Henry Ruggs. Hunter Renfro. Tyra Williams left to the Lions. They don't have many options at receiver. And they just added Kenyon Drake, who's rushed for over 200, rushed over 250 times for over 900 yards last year for the Arizona Cardinals. Those are RB1 numbers. Josh Jacobs is already the RB1 there, rushing over 1,000 yards and over 10 touchdowns. They're going to have a lot of carries together, at least 30 in total. And that's not including the touches they're going to get, also catching the ball on checkdowns. Derek Carr. Only reason why he's in the only in the good category and not the one above it, which is great. Not because of his capable play, but because of the offense that he is in and the way John Gruden has a big ego and won't back down to nobody. Next person, like I was saying, who's going to run this crazy 1-2 running back offense is Baker Mayfield. The underbake who also sees UFOs at night. Allegedly sees UFOs at night. Um, has a great offense. Steven Stefanski helped rebuild his whole career through under 10 interceptions for the first time in his NFL career. Baker Mayfield also has Odell Beckham returning with Jarvis Landry. Two wide receiver one possibilities, but I'm not drafting either of them just because they're a run-heavy offense. They also have Peoples-Jones, Njoku, Austin Hooper, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt gets a lot of the catches. Nick Chubb gets a lot of the runs. Baker Mayfield is someone who still wasn't throwing over 25 times a game last year his lack of throwing with his inconsistent receiver play with also the heavy run scheme offense Steven Stefanski is a guru but he's not going to make you a fantasy champion guru just yet another person I am not drafting but he's going to be high on the waiver wire Baker Mayfield didn't do that bad of a job last year but he doesn't garner anything too great as he only averaged 15.9 points per game last year in fantasy Daniel Jones, another guy who I am very wary on and I would just let fall out of the draft. He was a 24th ranked quarterback last year, missing a couple games, scored 190 overall fantasy points and averaged 13.57 fantasy points per game. I'm letting him slip just because he had more turnovers and touchdowns. Reason why he's just in this good category and it helps a little bit is because he has... Kenny Galladay, who's a wide receiver one. Sorry, brain fart. He has Sterling Shepard, which is a wide receiver three flex play. Darius Slayton, who's a wide receiver three flex play. Evan Ingram, who's a wide receiver one slash wide receiver two. Calvin Benjamin, they just added as another tight end. Saquon Barkley is back. One of the better receivers in the NFL and was a top fantasy running back his rookie year coming to the New York Giants. But I still, another guy, terrible decision making. Terrible line, not one of the best play callers. I don't trust the Giants as far as I could throw them. They were the 31st ranked offense in fantasy points. Yes, they did add Saquon and Kenny Galladay now, but still, yet to be seen in the good position. These two guys may be able to go into the high position, the higher position, which is the great, the, the tier above good, below premium, and below elite. Good is going to be Cam Newton and Ryan Fitzpatrick. These two are late-round quarterbacks. That These are the only two I probably see, and Trevor Lawrence, who I'm going to say next, I would get in like the later rounds. Um, over the past three seasons, in games where Ryan Fitzpatrick has thrown at least 15 passing attempts, he has averaged 21.2 
fantasy points per game, and that's definitely enough to be a quarterback one in fantasy football. He That's very impressive for a player with his weapons who you will be able to probably get around your last pick. You may be able to bump him up a tier to that great list where I have Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill. I'll explain those after. Also, Cam Newton. If he could keep the same or at least similar rushing uh, stats from what he had in 2020, which was 592 rushing yards and 12 rushing touchdowns while improving on his terrible passing stats, which was 2,600 yards and 8 touchdowns, he could find himself as a QB1 in 2021. For all the hate he got, he was still QB16. You add Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith, who are two wide receiver one slash wide receiver twos. Hopefully that helps give Cam Newton that security blanket that he needs just in case he decides he wants to make a bad decision. Two other great quarterbacks are Tua, who finished as the 32-ranked quarterback last year. That's all because of Ryan Fitzpatrick. But he still has injury woes. He's still coming back. He's rehabbing. There's a lot of things with, wrong with Tua. That's why he's in this good range. He scored only 140 fantasy points last year in 10 games and averaged 14 points per game. Yes, he has Will Fuller. Yes, he has Devontae Parker. And yes, he has Mike Gusecki. And even Miles Gaskin, who I have said on record, that should go in round three and has a potential for wide receiver one. If you see him in round five or six, you get him no matter what. Because they didn't get anyone in the draft. They're showing that they trust Miles Gaskin. Last year, he scored 32 fantasy points in my fantasy championship, scoring three touchdowns against the Oakland Raiders. Miles Gaskin could do it in the air. He could do it on the ground. Tua has great weapons, but they were all hurt at least three games each. We have Will Fuller, who got hurt halfway through the season, was out for the rest of the year. Devontae Parker, who was out more than three games. Mike Gusecki, who was out for more than three games after tearing something. Miles Gaskin was out with COVID and this and that. And everyone's just fall folding around Tua. So... We'll see how much of a production he could keep up because I don't think he's the type that will put the team on his back. And the Jaguars, quarterback Trevor Lawrence, he's another quarterback that I see in this good range just because he's an elite talent. They say he's the next John Elway. He's the next Andrew Luck. But I have yet to see it. Jaguars are still a five-win team. Yes, they have Travis Etienne, who's his only boy. James Robinson, still an undrafted rookie, so maybe he won't be able to keep panning out as the year, years progress. DJ Chark, only four years into the league, still a young receiver. LaVisca Chenault, only second year in the league. Marvin Jones, an older receiver, but he's not elite. He's just an old, great slot receiver. He's like a better actual NFL version of T. Higgins, not a better fantasy version of T. Higgins. So I have them in the good range. They still have no defense. They're going to have a lot of problems and headaches going into this next year. Trevor Lawrence is someone that can transcend them and be in the great category, which is the next one I'm going to say. But Trevor Lawrence is still in the good compared to a lot of these quarterbacks. Um, Let's go on to the great part, which is the next part of the pyramid that I have set up. These are the guys you should get between 10 and 14, you know, around there in those rounds. Because I'm not high on quarterbacks. I'd say you should get wait till 10th round in general. Because I picked up Justin Herbert. I've picked up Russell Wilson off waiver wires. I picked up all these guys off waivers and they've had great top 10 years without drafting. I had Ryan Tannehill and Justin Herbert last year. I didn't need a quarterback. I was fine with, with both of those guys alternating. Just depending on strength of schedule. Someone I consider great. Not premium, which is above it. And not elites, which is the best. Not good, though which is not the best, which is funny how I have it set up. But yes, the great Joe Burrow. He has his boy Jamar Chase now. He has Tyler Boyd, who's a top 10 receiver, top 20 receiver, sorry. T. Higgins, top 15 receiver because of his PPR possessions alone. Three really good receivers, one of the best receiving cores in the NFL, along with Joe Mixon, who could be an RB1 if he decides to stay healthy. But that's why he... And he has a great uh, toughness about him, a great swagger. Justin Jefferson just said it the other day, quarter, I mean running wide receiver of the Minnesota Vikings, ex-LSU teammate of Joe Burrow, said, what's the difference between Kirk Cousins and Joe Burrow? He says, Joe Burrow has just more swag to him. He has more toughness in him, and he's not afraid to take a hit. A little bit of a dig at Kirk Cousins, 
But Joe Burrow just shows you what type of tenacious guy he is. He rallies people around him in the locker room. Last year before he was out after week 11, he was a top 10 fantasy quarterback. He could run. He could throw. The Bengals defense isn't that great, so they're going to have to always come back from games. He's the man there. As long as everyone can stay healthy along it, along with him, they should be fine. I like Joe Burrow in that great conversation. He was a 25th ranked quarterback last year, averaging 17.8 points per game. I already said his name. Kirk Cousins, one of the better quarterbacks. He finished as the 11th ranked quarterback last year, averaging 19 points per game. He's a perfect example. No one was rushing to draft Kirk Cousins last year. If you waited to get him, you'd have a top 11 quarterback and you would have been able to draft a C.D. Lamb, a Justin Jefferson, um, I don't know, someone just late in the later rounds. You would have been able to get them instead of drafting a quarterback early. Kirk Cousins still gave you that top ten, top ten, 11 production. He has Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen, who are both top 10 receivers. They added another rookie receiver, and they have Dalvin Cook, which is one of the best running backs in the NFL Probably a top three fantasy draft pick. I like Dalvin Cook a lot. Kirk Cousins I like a lot. He's great. I would get him probably in the 14th round if he's there. Another great quarterback who is not great NFL standard-wise, but he has all the weapons. He has Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith, Chase Claypool, and now they just added one of my sleeper running backs, rookie running backs going into next year. Nah, G. Harris. They were the worst rushing team last year. So Big Ben had to throw, throw, throw. Big Ben's going to throw, throw, throw still a lot because he wants to have command of this offense as he is the oldest guy on. And the oldest guy on the offense and the best. And probably he sees himself as the number one leader. Especially with all these TikTok stars that are dancing around him. Big Ben, I like him going to next year. He still averaged 18.4 points per game last year at the age of 35. For, uh, was a QB 14. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. We are okay with Big Ben going to next year because of weapons, and now he has a running game. Another great quarterback, Matt Ryan. He had a Kyle Pitts. Calvin Ridley's a top five receiver. Julio Jones is a top five actual receiver, so he's going to warrant just a lot of attention. Double teams from a lot of people. Their defense was a bottom-tier defense last year. The Atlanta Falcons' defense was. And so they're going to have to throw a lot more. They're in a tough division where they're with the Panthers, who have been trying to revamp on offense. They're with Tom Brady and the Bucks, And they're also against the Saints, so they have to throw, throw, throw. They're going to be in good climate conditions all the time because they're in a dome. The Saints are in a dome two times a year, so they're in a dome pretty much 10 times out of the year. Matt Ryan has a shotgun-style offense, most completion, six years in a row. We really like Matt Ryan going into next year. He's a great quarterback. Someone else, I would wait till the 14th round. All these guys I'm waiting till the 14th round pretty much to get. Carson Wentz. He's someone I'm not too high on, but he has quarterback guru Frank Reich. He also has a, one of the best offensive lines, if not the best offensive line in the NFL behind the Colts. Great run game. Great emerging receiver, Michael Pittman. Great flyer in T.Y. Hilton. Frank Reich, like I said, quarterback guru. Carson Wentz is someone I would, I would be, you would want to get because he has quarterback one value and everyone's scared of him because of the narrative that surrounds Carson Wentz around him being cursed and jinxed and everything else that I think he is. <laughs> but he's in this great category because he's better than good. He's better than good. I can't even hate on him. He he's a great quarterback. He just needs to get his feet back under him. And the Eagles and Doug Peterson were not helping him one bit last year. Another great quarterback, I say, is Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford is now surrounded by great Rams receivers. He's not in that same Lions offense that haunted him all the years that he played there. New star, Sean McVay, made a QB1 out of Jared Goff in fantasy before he could make Matt Stafford, a top 10 quarterback, easily. Matt Stafford still was a cap- is a capable thrower. He finished as a 15 quarterback rank last year, averaging 16 points per game. Played all 16 games. He's as tough as they get. And Ryan Tannehill, because they took Jonu Smith and Corey Davis away from him. That takes some points away from them. But A.J. Brown is still a top one receiver, but they're going to try to run with Derrick Henry a lot. 
Tamper your expectations for Ryan Tannehill. I don't know why I wanted to sing, but yes, thank you for listening to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, where we make people champions. When we come back, we're going to finish my quarterback pyramid. I basically went through round 16 through 10, and then the next couple uh, ones are going to be, you know, are going to be, should be selected in a certain couple of rounds. Remember, I think you should wait till round 10 or later to draft a quarterback just because you don't need one. But if you think otherwise, at least this pyramid could help you. We're going to follow with NFL news and my two fantasy football previews at the end of the show when we come back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. back here at the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I gave you the first half of my quarterback pyramid, the quarterbacks that I would say you should draft between the rounds 10 through 16. Um, these quarterbacks were good, great, you know, they're Big Ben, Kirk Cousins, Joe Burrow, just to name a few. Those guys you could rely on, but not someone you're going to draft high for. Like I said, there's maybe a Rashad Bateman you could get. Um, maybe you could pick up, I don't know, Tyler Higby, and he'll help you out as a tight end later in the year. Noah Font. You could get better value with these picks than you have to get a quarterback because there's so many of them, so many of them being dropped, and there's only 12 people in your league. I understand if there's 16, you got to worry about getting a quarterback. But if it's not a 16-man league, if it's just a nice 12-man league, especially a 10- or 8-man league, wait to get your quarterback. Even if someone's panicking and buying, getting two quarterbacks, you're fine. You're fine. Just wait to get your quarterback. We still have to talk about some NFL news. Amon Ross St. Brown, he's not too happy, apparently, on the Lions too. But I don't think he's not happy with the Lions. And... Do you think the Eagles are going to get Deshaun Watson? I hope not. <laughs> I don't like the Eagles, so that would kind of ruin everything for me and not make me too happy. But yes, we are going to go into the second half of my quarterback pyramid. Let's go over the premium quarterbacks on my pyramid. We'll start off first with Justin Herbert. Quarterback Justin Herbert. Of the I was just gonna say the San Diego Superchargers, like an old man, of the Los Angeles Chargers is a great quarterback, actually. And you could I would understand if you were to think that he would finish as a top five quarterback because they have Keenan Allen, top ten receiver, Mike Williams, great receiver. They just added Jared Cook. Austin Eckler's finally fully healthy. That offense is ready to go. They also have great like fly guys like Guy in and other guys that could fly on the Chargers offense. They always have had that type of play. But Justin Herbert is someone who's going to have a great year next year. It's a second year going to the NFL. There's also sophomore slumps, so you gotta be prepared for that. He's not elite yet, but he was still in his rookie year where he threw for the most passing yards and touchdowns in quarterback rookie history, beating Baker Mayfield. 
He threw, he had, I mean, 22.86 fantasy points per game. Justin Herbert started off really strong, kind of fizzled out in the middle, and then got hot at the end like a rookie quarterback is to do. Next year, I could see a lot of big steps for them. There is a new offense surrounding Justin Herbert. Hopefully, it is more friendly towards um, that kind of drag route, a drag route friendly because those receivers are really good at creating separation. If they just do drag routes all day, Justin Herbert just has to throw dump passes. Those little dump passes to Austin Eckler, those little dump passes to Keenan Allen. Get these guys who are great skill positions in open fields. Easy, easy, easy. Get those guys in open fields and they could help you help Justin Herbert. Actually, help Justin Herbert help you win your fantasy football championship. I like Justin Herbert going into next year a lot. He's someone I would get 10th round, but they're not going to let it last that long. I would probably say realistically the highest I'd get Justin Herbert, 8th round. One of the better quarterbacks on this list. Only a couple are better than him on this premium side. Russell Wilson, someone I that I see is better than him. Russell Wilson's getting better with age. Doesn't get hurt. Played all 16 games last year. Averaged 23.3 fantasy points per game. Starts to fizzle out towards the end of the year because their offense is kind of being figured out. It's run, 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 deep ball. Run, 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 deep ball. Run, run, deep ball. Oh, run, run. Well, I'm just going to panic and I'm going to run now since I'm Russell Wilson and I'm a, mo- I'm a dual threat quarterback. He knows how to use his legs but not put himself in harm's way. I like Russell Wilson for that. Russell Wilson, I would only, is the only quarterback I'd probably draft higher than Justin Herbert. Still would wait till the 10th round. But if I had to realistically get Russell Wilson in a round, it would be 7th. 7th, 7th, 7th because I think there's a lot better quarterbacks still to come. That I have to say. Someone that's on this list just because if he came back, uh, then I he's on the premium side just because he would be on the lead side if he was just playing from the get-go. Deshaun Watson has too many allegations going against him. A lot of sneaky stuff. We don't know the full truth about it, but Deshaun Watson was the fifth-ranked quarterback last year, averaging 23 points per game and the leading yards thrower in the NFL last year, but that's only if he plays. We don't want him on the Texans, though. We want him on a different team. Another premium, a.k.a. really good option. Really, really good option, actually. Tom Brady. Tom Brady's old. He's 44. He shouldn't be able to do it. While he was only one point away from Ryan Tannehill being the seventh-ranked quarterback in the NFL in fantasy football, he was actually the eighth-ranked fantasy football quarterback. doesn't matter how old he was. Played all 16 games. Averaged 21.8 points per game. Yes, the inconsistency was there. Sometimes he was um, given a lot of fantasy points. Sometimes he wasn't. But Tom Brady has all the weapons too. Still has Mike Evans going to next year. Now a full offseason with Antonio Brown. One of the best slot receivers in the NFL. Because he's one of the best receivers in the NFL. Especially at route running, speed, separation. You name it. Also... Um, Matt Sta- or Tom Brady's run game is not one of the best run games. They're really inconsistent with Ryan, uh, Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. So they're still going to have to rely on Tom Brady's arm when it comes to these big divisional games. Like I said, that division's tough. They have to go against the Panthers. They have to go against the Saints, and they have to go against Panthers, Saints, and the and Matt Ryan's Atlanta Falcons. So a lot of shootout games. A lot of games where they have to put a lot of nut points on the board. Tom Brady's never going to neglect the fact that he has to give it to Mike Evans, Rob Gronkowski, all these great weapons that they have. But he's going to still have those games where he's off or he's not going to throw the ball as much because their overall theme of a Tom Brady team is winning, baby. It's all that matters. All that matters is that you win. So Tom Brady, for that reason, wait till the 10th round to get him. He could have been almost on that great spectrum, but has better weapons than any of those guys on that great spectrum. And he's the better leader than all those guys as well. So he's barely on this premium, but his inconsistency is where we find trouble. Jalen Hurts. Yes, I know. I know. Jalen Hurts. But with looking at like Philly will hand him the sec as like hand him like the reigns as a second-year starter, he should 
easily be a quarterback run at the end of the season because people still don't have a game plan on them so or game film on him. So they don't know how he's going to come out, especially in this new offense. He could run. He could pass. He does it both. And his 24.5 fantasy points per game in four starts was better than Aaron Rodgers in 2020. So he was a QB1 while he was playing in the game, while he was actually starting. I don't know why they sat him down for Nate Sudfield to end the game in the last season or the last game of the season, but I don't know. Jalen Hurts is still someone who's fully capable of being a great quarterback going into next year. I like Jalen Hurts a lot, especially with now they have Miles Sanders. They added another two running backs on their team, uh, Carry on Johnson. They added Devontae Smith, who was his old college receiver. Jalen Hurts is someone that, okay, let's see what you could do. Because I think that Jalen Hurts, or I mean, I think the Eagles stink, but Jalen Hurts has the potential to steal ball out just for the simple fact that he can run and that RPO is really deadly when you don't know what to expect. Like with RG3 when he first hit the scene in uh, in college football, I mean from college football to the NFL. I understand you're like, oh, but RG3 is washed up now. Yeah, washed up now, but that year where he went to go off on the Washington football team was a great year. So if you only could get Justin Jalen Hurts for a year, so be it. But Jalen Hurts can produce the same type of things as RG3. Yes, RG3 had Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur all as assistant coaches, but Jalen Hurts has a new head coach, keys to that offense, and he has that rushing and running ability, averaging 24.5 yards, I mean 24.5 points per game in fantasy football, which was more than Aaron Rodgers, who's also on my premium list. Yes, Aaron Rodgers didn't make it to the elite list, because there's too many things swirling around Aaron Rodgers. Is he going to be on this team? Is he going to be on that team? The third-ranked fantasy quarterback last year had 387 total fantasy points. Played all 16 games. Averaged 24.20 fantasy points per game. Aaron Rodgers is always going to be elite. But we could see I could see you drafting him later. Oh, Jalen Hurts. As where to draft Jalen Hurts. I would draft Jalen Hurts around the same where same place I would draft Justin Herbert. Yeah, same spot, just because of his running ability. And Russell Wilson, I would draft higher. I mean, Jalen Hurts, not uh, Justin Herbert, sorry. Jalen Hurts the same as Tom Brady. Because they both could have that inconsistency, but Jalen Hurts showed you in a small sample size. And especially since they don't have game film, too much game film on him to really see what's up. That RPO could be very deadly going into fantasy next year. Aaron Rodgers is just someone I would draft... Probably in that Russell Wilson range. The eighth round, more like it. Um, Aaron Rodgers is someone that you could see flopping. Not flopping. You could see flopping on the Green Bay Packers and actually retiring if he has to keep playing. That's why they got Blake Bortles as reassurance. So Aaron Rodgers stays in my premium list. Let's go into the elite. These are the quarterbacks you should get from round one all the way on. Any round they're available, they're, they're for keeps. I'll tell you which rounds I would get them in, and we'll start kind of from low to bottom. First, Lamar Jackson. He's an elite quarterback, and I know you're going to say he doesn't belong in the first tier, but when you rush for 1,000-plus yards in back-to-back seasons, you belong in the top tier of fantasy quarterbacks, and that's it. That's just all I have to say about that. Lamar Jackson, two years with 1,000 yards rushing. Yes, he was a... 10th ranked quarterback last year with 22 fantasy points per game, but he was the number one quarterback the year before that slash MVP still had 341 fantasy points, only 2,600 throwing yards, but still we could still trust his rushing ability a lot because John Harbaugh is a very creative coach, special teams coach. So he's going to always find ways to get LaMarvelous open. Lamar Jackson, gotta love it. Elite quarterback. I'd get him. A little bit higher than I would get Russell Wilson. So sixth round because he's a quarterback running back. Quarterback running back. Sixth round. Someone I would also get in the sixth round. Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott who was a quarterback one until he went down. Who had over 1,800 yards. 14 touchdowns in his time with the Dallas Cowboys. While he was there just for a little bit. Dak Prescott still managed 
to average 27 points per game when he was playing, which was still number one in all of sport in all of fantasy football, quarterback or not. And he would throw 40 times a game because Mike McCarthy likes to do that. We would see it on the Green Bay Packers a lot of times when they would be in goal line situations. Aaron Rodgers would still throw the ball. They're going to take the ball out of Zeke hands more, it seems like, and they're going to put it more in Dak Prescott's hands. They just excite him to a crazy contract, making him one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL like he wanted to. So now it's time for Dak Prescott to show up, and they're going to put him behind the wheel, and they're going to have him throw the ball 30, 40 times a game. So, and is he capable? Yes, because he has CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, best receiving core in the NFL. Zeke, one of the best, if not top 10 running backs in the NFL. Never finished outside of the top 12 of fantasy football running backs. And he has Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin coming back. Dak Prescott's another guy I would get in the sixth round just because people are going to be weary on him after that leg injury. These guys I would get in round three or above now. Josh Allen. Josh Allen finishing as the number one quarterback in fantasy last year. I don't think he is this year. I think Patrick Mahomes will probably. But still, he had 405 fantasy points, played all 16 games, averaged 25.3 fantasy points per game, which was still number one. Josh Allen just added Emmanuel Sanders. They still have Gabriel Davis. They still have Cole Beasley, who caught over 900 yards. They still have Stephon Diggs, who had over 163 targets. And they don't have a good running game. They only have Devin Singletary, and they only have Zach Moss. So between those two and Josh Allen having to rush for over 500 yards like he did last year, his throwing ability he's going to throw all the time, his rushing ability he's one of the best. As long as he doesn't get hurt, top round, top rounds one through three. That's where he's going. He's an elite quarterback. He could do it both on the ground and in the air. Elite. Josh Allen, probably still the lowest I would get out of these next three I'm saying right now. He's going to finish as a top five quarterback. But I feel like this guy is going to probably finish higher than him. Kyler Murray. They just added old A.J. Green on that team. But they have DeAndre Hopkins. They have old Larry Fitzgerald still. They have Christian Kirk, who's young. So DeAndre Hopkins and Christian Kirk are one's young, one's fairly young, not too old. Then they have Larry Fitzgerald and A.J. Green, who are older. Uh, I'm sorry. A.J. Green's like around the same age as DeAndre Hopkins. I'm just being mean. He just seems old because he gets hurt all the time. But... With all those guys, along with adding James Conner, and they have Chase Edmonds, so they still have their two running back system. Kyler Murray averaged the most rushing yards per run in the NFL. Kyler Murray still had 390 fantasy points per last year, finishing second in fantasy football, right in front of Aaron Rodgers, averaging 24.4 fantasy points per game. I like Kyler Murray more than I would like Josh Allen. Because he runs it better and he runs it more often. That volume of running, it may not last forever in the NFL, but it's going to last another year. And I could see him still rushing for over 700 yards and still being able to throw for over 4,000 yards. Yes, Josh Allen was the number one uh, quarterback last year, but it's not like it was by far. Kyler Murray's only getting better. He's been progressively getting better each year in fantasy football. He only finished 15 points behind Josh Allen, which isn't crazy. It's just one Crazy game. If anything, Kyler Murray kind of did you dirty at the end because he only scored 14 fantasy points in the championship game. I'm happy from that just because um, I was playing against Kyler Murray, and I was actually really surprised because he was going against the Niners. Niners didn't have a good defense last year. I didn't know, but then what do you know? Dun, 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 dun. Kyler Murray poof, takes a poo-poo on himself, and he doesn't produce. That's not going to happen much next year. Kyler Murray rushes too much. Like I said, averages the most rushing yards per rush. So that's someone I would see as a quarterback too. And my number one elite quarterback, only quarterback, I would ever be like, okay, you got a first round. I can't be mad at you. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes lost Super Bowl last year. 380 fantasy points last year in 15 games. Average more fantasy points than... Kyler Murray and Josh Allen, but had 25 less fantasy points only for the simple fact that he played one less game. Patrick Mahomes is on a revenge tour. He's one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Youngest, youngest Super Bowl, one of the youngest MVPs, one of the youngest Super Bowl MVPs. Patrick Mahomes is elite. He could throw for 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns. He's going to be the first one to do it. If anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes, and you don't want to be there 
when Tesla stock or Apple stock, I'm comparing them to a Tesla or Apple stock, one of the elite stocks takes off because you know at some point they're going to take off. And yes, Patrick Mahomes had a great first year where he threw for almost 50 touchdowns, but come on now. Where he threw for 50 touchdowns, but come on now. That was only the first year. He's barely, he's starting to learn, he's starting to adapt. He still has Travis Kelsey, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, number one tight end, number one receiver in Tyree Kill. McCole Hardman's getting better. This offense is getting more electric. Patrick Mahomes isn't going to slow down. All they've been worrying about is getting the offensive line better. And that's all that matters. That's my quarterback list. If you need to figure out, oh, hey, how does Ryan grade his quarterbacks? That's the list. The elite list, one round, first round all the way to whatever round you want. Premium list, round 6 through 10, 8 through 10. Great list, 10 through 16. Good list, which is the bottom, either 14, 15, 16, or let them fall off. <sighs> now you understand where I'm coming from with quarterbacks. You don't need them. But they do help you win championships because, like I said, they touch the ball every offensive snap. When we come back, we're going to talk about some NFL news swirling the league and give some fantasy football previews after this commercial break. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. This is the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast, where we can help anybody become a champion. I am still your host, Ryan Basulto. We just went over my quarterback pyramid of fantasy football. Talked about the elites, which were Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray. I know Lamar Jackson isn't one of the best throwers, but you can't tell me a guy who's rushed back-to-back years in 1,000 yards isn't one of the uh, top quarterbacks in fantasy football. No one does that, and that's just added value to him. We want added value whenever we can. My premiums were Jalen Hurts, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, if he comes back, Russell Wilson, and Justin Herbert. Jalen Hurts, I know. We don't know about Philadelphia. Jalen Reger was their best weapon last year, but they added his boy Devontae Smith, someone he played with in college. Jalen Hurts also averaged 24.5 points per game in four starts, which was better than Aaron Rodgers in 2020. We like that. We like that a lot. And Aaron Rodgers is on that list too. On my great, I had on my great side of the pyramid, which was people getting drafted, I would say, from the 10th to 14th round. Big Ben, Ryan Tannehill, Kirk Cousins, Matt Stafford, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, Joe Burrow. Ryan Tannehill had to drop. He lost Jonu Smith. I know he was a quarterback seven last year in fantasy football, but he lost Jonu Smith, lost Corey Davis. That's a lot of yards, and they're going to run more with Derrick Henry. They just know how great he is. They're going to keep on churning and churning him. Big Ben's old, but he has great weapons around him. And then the good is everyone else. Surprisingly, Tua and Derrick Carr are on my good only, but that's just because we need to see more. Derrick Carr's offense isn't great for fantasy and Tua could just be a little bit inconsistent, and we'll see how the sophomore slump treats him. 
after this segment, we still have to go over my previews for both the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals as we close out the NFC North in my fantasy previews. Let's go over some news right now. The Green Bay Packers signed free agent quarterback Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles hasn't had any chance of relevance. He was a backup on the Rams for a couple years ever since he went to the Jacksonville Jaguars or was on the Jacksonville Jaguars and lost the AFC Championship. The Jacksonville Jaguars have imploded and so have Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles was not helping that team, but he did help them go to an AFC Championship where they barely lost to the New England Patriots and they probably could have had a chance against the Philadelphia Eagles but now the Phil, uh, the Jaguars are just averaging 29 point or 29th in averaging points per game. Their passing numbers are horrendous ever since Blake Bortles left. They're, they can't do anything. Um, but Blake Bortles hasn't really had any great moments to shine. But what does that mean for Aaron Rodgers now? Why would they get Blake Bortles and they have George, Jordan Love already? Why would they need another veteran to be there for Jordan Love unless they know that everything is unmendable with Aaron Rodgers. That's why this is the top story. The top story isn't that Blake Bortles is signing with the Packers. The real lead, because that's burying the lead, the real lead is Aaron Rodgers isn't there. So what does Blake Bortles do? Aaron Rodgers still should be happy on that Green Bay offense because he was the MVP last year. He still had the number one receiver. Well, I know it's the NFL, but fantasy football had the number one receiver. His receiver had 18 plus touchdowns. More than 1,500 yards. Had Robert Tanyan, who is still a top 10 receiver or top 10 tight end. Aaron Jones, one of the better running backs. It's just he wanted a first-round pick. And, you know, if a guy with the ego wants something, you don't give it to him, he's going to be unhappy. So why would I, why would you have three, two veteran quarterbacks and a rookie quarter, kind of rookie quarterback in Jordan Love on a roster and you don't plan on him leaving? I don't. Something's not right with Green Bay. Just be careful because with Aaron Rodgers, that Green Bay Packers offense is a top five fantasy offense, maybe even a top three fantasy offense because they would have Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, two guys who are almost uh, you could draft in a fantasy league. They have Devontae Adams, Marquez Valdez-Scanling, who are still one guy you could still pick up off of waivers and then one guy who's probably a number a first-round receiver if Aaron Rodgers returns to him, and Robert Tanyan, who could be a top 5, 210 tight end going into next year. Last year, he had five games where he was in double digits, four straight games with a touchdown. Robert Tanyan started to get his chemistry with Aaron Rodgers, picking it up towards the end of the year. That Packers offense was amazing. The number two fantasy offense overall, um, but number one in fantasy points overall. As an offense, they didn't allow a lot of sacks. They had one of the best lines in the NFL. They were the they were only second in sacks allowed. Aaron Rodgers, like I said, the number three ranked fantasy quarterback last year, was also MVP. Played all sixteen games. You liked his durability. You liked that you could rely on him every single game. But without Aaron Rodgers, they had to get Blake Bortles because they need someone that can at least help out. Jordan Love, and just know, Blake Bortles does have more playoff wins since 2017 than Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, take that take that how you want to take that. Some more info news. Kelvin Benjamin, former first-round wide receiver Kelvin Benjamin, who was on the Carolina Panthers, is now going, but now he's converted to a tight end. Yes, he was getting fatter towards the end of his career. Kelvin Benjamin was one of the top rookie receivers coming out of the draft when he was first drafted by the Carolina Panthers, he, him with the long, along with Cam Newton, he went to a Super Bowl with them, but it was to no avail. He only spent a couple years in the league. He was out. He's more of a big body threat. He's someone you can see as like a Jared Cook. He's old, a little slower, but he's going to have good hands and be able to have good red zone presence. But the problem is he's undisciplined, and there's just people you don't want to get are undisciplined people. You don't want people who are 
you know, notorious for just getting lazy on their work ethic. You rather have the Frank Gores, the guys who are actually going to try out there. Calvin Benjamin is also on the Giants. Daniel Jones was a not even a top. Well, he he was a top twenty five, but he was twenty fourth ranked quarterback, only averaging thirteen points per game last year. There's still love. You got to throw love to Kenny Galladay because he's going to get mad like he was on the Detroit Lions last year. You got to throw it to Sterling Shepard. You got to throw it to Darius Slayton. And there's still another uh, tight end one over there, Evan Ingram. Along with that, you have Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is coming back. It's just a lot of love that has to go around. And you don't know if Calvin Benjamin is going to be a tight end. You could rely on fantasy. This is all just a facade, a charade. This is every a facade and charade are different. A charade is like kind of fooling someone. A facade is a front. Uh, it's just the front of something, but it's it's a front. It's a front. I, they have Calvin Benjamin just there for uh, news. Hopefully, they'll get some more money out of it. I don't know what their end game is, but the New York Giants are not going to be doing too much on that fantasy offense with Daniel Jones. I don't, I don't see it. No, I just Daniel Jones. He's just not. He's not going to develop the quarterback that he has to be. He came from Duke anyway. It's not like he was. Supposed to be that guy like a Trevor Lawrence. Um, speaking about someone who's going to be that guy, Travis Etienne is now taking all minicap reps at receiver, not at running back. And Urban Meyer said, worst case scenario, you have a running back that has elite receiving skills. So Travis Etienne just went from being a 10th rounder. Like say you want to spend it. Oh, I want to get Russell Wilson. Well, what if you're able to get Ryan Fitzpatrick? Or uh, if you're able to get a Cam Newton and they give you the same production as Russell Wilson next year, like Ryan Tannehill did because he was only one spot behind Russell Wilson, but he was drafted and he wasn't drafted in most leagues. Now Travis Etienne moves up into a top eight pick for me, top eight rounds, because he wants to give him that Percy Harvin role. Trevor Lawrence is his boy, the quarterback that they're giving the keys to on the Jacksonville Jaguars, and... On top of that, they want while well, they want it to be the Percy Harvard, but on top of that, James Robinson, you think he's gonna be in the system a lot, but I think they just want to use both of them because they know James Robinson is a great running back. But they're gonna use Travis Etienne more. They spent a first round pick on him. James Robinson had to have the year that he had last year where he rushed over a thousand yards, finished as the fourth best running back in fantasy football. Because if he didn't, he would have gotten cut on this new transition that they're doing. On the Jacksonville Jaguars. The new look that they're doing for themselves. They're trying to start new. Travis Etienne's part of that new look. We like Travis Etienne a lot. Especially in PPR leagues. I could see him finishing as a top 15 running back now. Like kind of as much as Antonio Gibson was. He's going to get played less in the beginning of the year. But trust me. As the year progresses. He's going to get more and more reps like a DeAndre Swift. So we like hopefully... Travis Etienne impresses them enough at receiver that he could play receiver as well because, it, like I said, they ha- only have LaVisca Chenault. They lost Keelan Cole. They, they don't have a tight end. Well, they got Tebow, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Travis Etienne could be that slot guy. They have to do spread formation because it's a college offense with a college pro or a college uh, head football coach, college quarterback. Might as well run a spread offense. One running back in the back. You could have James Robinson in the back blocking Travis Etienne on one side, Marvin Jones on the other, and on the outside you have LaVisca Chanel and DJ Chark. Perfect. Perfect fantasy value. Travis Etienne's value goes up like crazy for me. ESPN's Diana Russini thinks Philadelphia is going to do something big before the start of the season to improve their roster. Russini also goes on to say that the team could be in on quarterback Deshaun Watson, once his legal situation is involved, I kind of just wanted to briefly go over this because this isn't that great of a sign for Jalen Hurts. Even though I have my elite discu- discussion, I want to wait for this after. If they keep doing this, they're going to hurt his confidence like they hurt Carson Wentz's confidence. Jalen Hurts now has, still has Dallas Goddard, who's one of the top 10 fantasy uh, tight ends. They also... Have Devontae Smith, who's Jalen Hurts' boy. Jalen Rager, who's a first-round receiver. Miles Sanders, who's one of the better running backs in fantasy football. And probably in the year, he's going to be a top 20 to me. A top 15 to me. Especially if Jalen Hurts kills it with the RPO. But 
This is troubling because why would they want Deshaun Watson if they're in on Jalen Hurts? I know Deshaun Watson is a one-generation talent. He led the league in passing yards this year. It's Everything about him is great, 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 great. But Jalen Hurts should be the quarterback one. What are the Eagles thinking? They got to stop trying to get another quarterback. 24.5 fantasy points per game in four starts. 24.5. How many times do I have to say that out loud? Better than Aaron Rodgers, just below Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, only in fantasy points per game. And I guess if you want to count Dak Prescott's five games, Dak Prescott. But still, why are you doing this to yourself, Eagles? This is why I don't want to draft anyone from your team. Jalen Hurts is someone I like. Someone I would want to draft like a Russell Wilson, like a Tom Brady. Not a Russell Wilson, like a Justin Herbert, like a Tom Brady. But you're you're doing all this stuff that's being funny. You're, you're sneaky stuff. Too many things are leaking out of that locker room. You don't need Deshaun. Deshaun Watson is having a lot of problems without the Eagles. And you have more problems being an Eagle. So, stay away from Deshaun Watson Eagles. I don't know why that rumor came out. It's not good for Jalen Hurts. So just be wary also again of Jalen Hurts going into next year. Amon Ross St. Brown was getting interviewed and he said the other day, I'm never going to forget. And he's talking about the 15 receivers that went before him, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, Tony, all these guys to name a few. Amon Ross St. Brown is the only receiver on the, uh, what's that team? Oh, the Lions. I literally forgot their name just because they're, they've been irrelevant for so long. But Amon Ross St. Brown, over a 1,000-yard receiver, not last year because the Pac-12 had a shortened season, but before that, Amon Ross St. Brown is, has the potential of being a top 25 receiver just because he is the only receiver on the Lions. They only have TJ Hawkinson, him, and Tyrell Williams, who gets hurt every other game on like, like he did on the Raiders. That's it. So... Monroe St. Brown is kind of a sleeper pick. That's why I mentioned him right now. He's, I feel like USC always produces some pretty good football players. People swear like USC products aren't the best all the time. They're not the best all the time. But Amon Ross St. Brown, I like him going to the Detroit Lions. I would get I would be I would get him from rounds 10 through 16. He's someone I would get in that range. I, I would probably get him 11. But something, and the most troubling thing out of all the NFL news is what I'm going to say right now, and it's the Bears. Of course, the Bears, the place where Jim McMahon said, quarterbacks go and die. That's where the careers go and die. We've had Rex Grossman there. We've had Mitchell Trubisky there. Nick Foles, they got him as the most expensive backup, and now they can't get rid of him. They have him there. Now they have Andy Dalton and Matt Nagy said on the current quarterback plan for the Bears that Andy Dalton is the starter. Andy's going to get the number one reps. That is the only reason why I didn't have Justin Fields. Justin Fields would have probably been in my premium rank because he has Darnell Mooney, second-year receiver, who's going to be really, really promising. He has Cole Kemet, a second-year tight end, who's also going to be really promising to bounce off of his 400-yard receiving effort last year from Notre Dame. They also have Dave Montgomery and Tyree Cohen coming back, who's a great pass catching back. And they have Allen Robinson, who's a wide receiver one, but he was the seventh ranked wide receiver in fantasy last year. Helped me also win a championship. You could rely on him getting you double digit fantasy points almost every game, especially in a PPR league. Andy Dalton wasn't spectacular. Like I said, he only averaged 13 13 fantasy points per game. In 11 games with the Dallas Cowboys, 143. Justin Fields, we know what he does. This year he went to the national championship, had over 2,000 yards, had over 2,500 yards. Very, very capable mobile quarterback. Very athletic, very tough. Knows how to lead a team in a big conference. Knows how to play a pro-style offense. Matt Nagy's a younger coach who likes to play, run a co- a college. You know, everyone flares out, does, does crazy routes type of offense. Justin Fields is someone who, if has the opportunity, can be a quarterback one next year. And he's someone, like I said, they're saying Andy Dalton's a starter now. So you get Justin Fields, 16th pick, 
15th pick last two rounds, get him, and then guess what's going to happen? Andy Dalton's not going to be the starter after a couple weeks because they're going to start losing and the Bears are going to start getting mad and say, why did you draft this guy in the first round? Not even why did you draft this guy the first round, 10th pick. Why did you move up in the draft to draft this guy? First round, 10th pick. Why? Because you have that security blanket. You have it ready just in case Andy Dalton messes up, which you know he will. Justin Fields will be waiting. So Justin Fields, I love with the 16th or 15th pick in the draft. 15th pick, if you get a little scared, you think someone's going to be like, eh, because you already know that last last pick, everyone's going to get someone that they just like. So if someone likes Justin Fields, which they probably do, they're going to be like, I don't care if he's not starting. I'll just get him and see what happens. Let it roll. And by the time they let it roll, they're going to let it roll all the way down the hill and to your face, into them winning to the fantasy championship because they took a flyer on Justin Fields because they, Listen to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Thank you for listening again. When I come back, I'm going to go over my NFL fantasy team previews over the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals as we close out my previews for the AFC North, the number one rushing offense, and the Bengals when we come back. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? The GSMC College Football Podcast is your ticket to all things college football. Join us as we talk college football from the national championship, the college rivalries, the bowl game, to the Heisman Trophy, to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, the Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. Download the GSMC College Football Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you again for listening to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm just happy to talk about my fantasy knowledge. I do a lot of my research because I don't like losing. I love winning. I have a super high competitive nature, as you can tell. Anything from heads or tails to, oh, you want to race right now? Let's just race. Let's see who's faster. Uh, Arm wrestling, anything. Fantasy football is something I just always take pride in. I Make sure that I try to keep it as real as I can about fantasy football while also giving you the numbers so you can decide on what you want to roll with. I'm giving you the knowledge. You only ultimately know how your fantasy goes, how your team how your team should look, and also how your kind of league goes. Sometimes I say, oh, draft Jamar Chase the fifth round. Someone really likes Jamar Chase, they'll get him in the first round throws it all completely off and then they get Najee Harris in the first round you're like wait so now I could get Aaron Jones in the second round and yeah so just go take a deep breath listen to these numbers do what you got to do on your outside research we went over my pyramid of all the quarterbacks that I like and where I like them going in next year's fantasy draft because I'm not a big quarterback guy you can just wait till after the after the whole draft is done and you know pick them up off the waiver wire but what, who am I to judge? Because I have also tried to draft Patrick Mahomes in the first round. It failed me, and that's why I don't do it again. But, yes, that has also happened. We also went over some good NFL news. Travis Etienne, definitely big, big ups to him. I see him having a more expanded role now that he is a receiver, especially taking receiving reps in minicamp. Worst-case scenario, like Urban Wire said, he's a running back with elite receiving abilities. It's not. It's not that hard. So we like him on a PPR type basis. Also, hopefully Eagles don't get Deshaun Watson because it's just getting confusing over there. Amon Ross St. Brown, also someone I'll get in the later rounds. Hopefully Matt Nagy makes his decision. We want Justin Fields out there. He says Andy Dalton is a starter, but 
I went over all that and more in the earlier part of the show. Thank you again for listening. Right now, it's the end of the show, so we are going to do my NFL team fantasy football previews. We'll start off with we'll start off with the better team, the Baltimore Ravens. They have eleven projected wins going into next year. You know that play calling is wonky. Their play calling last year was forty four percent passing, fifty six percent run. Anyone could have guessed that. If anything, you would have thought. I thought they throw the ball or run the ball a lot more, especially since they are the number one, as I said, rushing offense in the NFL. They had 3,071 total rushing yards last year. Passing yards was terrible, though. They were bottom in the NFL in passing yards with 2,739. Like I said, bottom, which was ranked 32nd. But they still managed to score a lot of points, especially with J.K. Dobbins. And Lamar Jackson as the ultimate running back, their seventh. In total points scored with 468. You know, Vegas has them only winning 11 games, which ranks third out of all NFL teams. So you know that they're going to do good in the regular season. And it all starts with the man, the myth, the legend, Lamar Jackson, the 10th ranked quarterback in last year's fantasy football. He has one of the highest touchdown rates at 6.9%. So he's more likely, only two people are more likely to score than him and those guys are on the Chiefs also most of his points come from rushing yards actually 42% of his points come from rushing yards which ranks fourth in the NFL that's when you know that he's one of the best running backs Lamar he had a down year after his MVP 2019 season but he was still very very good as a quarterback he didn't have a single game where he scored less than 13.5 fantasy points. So at least you didn't get a single digit fantasy performance. You only got mediocre to great Lamar Jackson going throughout those games. And you already know he has to play the Steelers, who have one of the better defenses, who has one of the top defenses in the NFL two years in a row. And he also had to go against the Browns, whose defense is now, you know, up and coming. You like the Browns' defense going into. Next year, the Ravens were 7th in total points scored. Like I said, their passing yards weren't the best, but they were number 1 in rush yards, number 1 in rush attempts, 3rd in rush in touchdowns, 7th in total touchdowns, and 5th in red zone attempts. So they get into the red zone a lot. Problem is, they were 13th in sacks allowed, and that is not good for Lamar Jackson. Um, he was actually close. He was actually closer to... Finishing as a QB1, then he was to finishing as a QB11. He should be considered as an elite quarterback in 2021. And I have no problem with him being taken in the first couple rounds just because of that running ability. Like I said, back-to-back time, back-to-back years as in a 1,000-yard rusher and you're a quarterback, that's not your <laughs> – that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So for him to be doing that and giving us those numbers and finishing as a number one receiver, a number one quarterback last year in fantasy football, averaging over 20, almost 30 fantasy points per game, going into this year where he was still a quarterback 10, we like him, especially now that they added J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins, who averaged 11.2 points per game, which was 33rd in the league, which is still good because at least it was 11 points. He at least was giving you double digits. His touchdown percentage wasn't that great. It was only 24th in the NFL at 32%. He needs to score more touchdowns. But with Mark Ingram now in Houston, the volume shift toward J.K. Dobbins. And Gus Edwards could steal some work, but Dobbins will still garner the majority of the carries like he started to at the towards the end of the year. And he doesn't need much as he was the most efficient runner last season with six Yards per carry. So how else are they not going to want him? If you're averaging over five yards per carry, you are doing phenomenal as a running back. Four yards per carry is average. That's like what Zeke was doing last year. That's why we weren't too impressed with him. But six yards per carry is simply amazing. We like the upside for J.K. Dobbins. The downside with Dobbins is he's going to lose goal line work due to both Lamar Jackson doing his perfect RPO, pulling it out. 
and then either throwing the ball or running it in because of his crazy juke ability. I put it on Twitter today at GSMC Fantasy Football. You should see Lamar Jackson juke that guy from the Buffalo Bills. It was absolutely disgusting. The guy had him in the backfield, dead plain in center, and he just juked him out of his feet. So there was nothing he could do about that. Um, so he's going to take it for Lamar Jackson and Gus Edwards are going to be able to take it away from him. And he will have limited receptions with Lamar tucking and running versus checking down. I see J.K. Dobbins as a mid to low running back to going into 2020. His receivers have gotten a little better. It was only Marquise Brown, but now they added Rashad Bateman. It likely won't be pretty for them in 2021. Uh, The Ravens finished last in pass attempts in 2020, and as long as Lamar is taking snaps, which is going to happen again, that's likely to continue. They will still have some boom performances here and there. It sounded like I said buffoon performances. Boom performances here and there, but they won't be reliable, and they'll probably finish outside top 40. Marquise Brown only had 700 and something receiving yards last year. That was barely above Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, if anything, is the one that you'd want to get. Rashad Bateman had over a thousand receiving yards last year for Minnesota, but that was college. That was college, man. You're going against the big boys. You're going against the cornerbacks of the Cleveland Browns, which is they just added Greg Newsom. They have Denzel Ward, who's one of the better corners. Troy Hill, they just got from the Rams. They have John Johnson at safety. They have they have all these guys on that Browns defense, and that's not even including. Who's on the Steelers defense, Mika Fitzpatrick, Joe Hayden. All these really good defensive backs in this division is going to make it tough for Rashad Bateman to have an absolute breakout year. I would temper your expectations, and I wouldn't really draft either of them going to next year. They were last in passing attempts, like I said. That's not a good sign, and Lamar Jackson's just going to run the ball. Where all that running's coming from has to be taken away from somewhere. And Mark Andrews. Andrews isn't on the same level, I would say as the big three tight ends, which are Darren Waller, George Kittle, and Travis Kelsey, but he should still be considered the next best thing. His 12.2 points per game in 2020 were ranked fourth. He ranked fifth in 2019, and I could see a bounce-back year for Andrews. And while he still likely won't touch the elite tight ends, he should still be considered a top option. I would probably get him around the same time I would get a Robert Tanyan. 10, 11th round. You got to get them later. I'm not getting Mark Andrews earlier than the 10th round. You still got Travis Etienne. You got um, Amon Ross St. Brown. There's a lot of options you could get. Uh, if you are if you haven't gotten Noah Font and no all these other guys who are, I still think, better options, I feel like Mark Andrews would be still a good option in the later, in the double-digit rounds. They're not a good throwing team. That's not what they are, but Lamar Jackson is the ultimate running back and J.K. Dobbins also rushed for an average of six yards per carry last year. That is amazing. Those are the only two guys I'm drafting. J.K. Dobbins I would get from five through seventh round and Lamar Jackson first through third round. But that was the number one rushing offense and the second place team in the AFC North. Let me know what you think at GSMC Fantasy Football on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Let us know. Let me know if you think... That Lamar Jackson is not worth a first or second round pick. I think he is just because he's a quarterback, so he touches it every play. And if anything, he's trying to run the ball every play. Like I said, it was a 56% running, 44% passing. And, you know, Lamar Jackson, I'm they're going to figure him out at some point, but he's too good, too agile, and still hasn't gotten hurt like that to the point to where you would be wary of him. The next team I'm doing a preview on, uh, they're they're definitely the youngest brother out of all of the AFC North teams. It is the Cincinnati Bengals, the championship-less. They have none Cincinnati Bengals. Their play calling is 60% pass, 40% run. You already know because they're down most of the game and Joe Mixon's hurt. And they don't have Giovanni Bernard because he's now on the Tampa Bay Bucks. So you already know their projected six and a half wins Next year, their numbers weren't too great. Their passing yards were only 3,448, but that's just because Joe Burrow got hurt middle part of the year. He was averaging 17.4 points per game as a quarterback, which ranked 17th, and he was top 10 at the time in total quarterback points. 
in rush yards. They were 24th with 1,668. No Giovanni Bernard. Joe Mixon was hurt most of the year, but he did average 16.6 points per game when he did play. And they only scored 311 points, which was 29th in the NFL. They ranked in a lot of the bottom categories in the NFL as the Bengals were missing Joe Burrow when they had Ryan Finley and all these other guys. They were just last in pretty much almost every category. They were 30th in total points allowed. They were 29th in total yards. It was it was truly sad for the Bengals, but they had a lot of promise. Joe Burrow is someone I said I would draft maybe with the 14th pick, 15th pick. Uh, I could still get Kirk Cousins and still get the same value from Joe Burrow. But let's do our preview on the Cincinnati Bengals. And while the Bengals scored the fourth fewest points in the NFL and also throwing for the sixth fewest passing yards, they were 24th in rushing yards on their way to a 4 11 and one record. That is why we're only kind of like they're a good team, but they're not the best. And this is all based on Joe Burrow again. Assuming Joe can return to form after tearing his ACL and MCL, he could have great fa- value in fantasy drafts this season. His 17.4 points per game were 17th in the position, and that was only with a 3.2% touchdown rate, which ranked 33rd. So he didn't have to score touchdowns for him to get points. He's throwing a lot of rushing yards. He has a great receiving core, as I'm going to mention right now. His number should easily come up in touchdowns, and with the addition of Jamar Chase plus a healthy Joe Mixon, look for this offense to take a big leap behind Joe Burrow to approach back-end quarterback run numbers. That's why I had him on my great pyramid for NFL quarterbacks as opposed to having him on the good part because even though the Bengals had one of the worst fantasy offenses in the NFL. They scored the 26th most fantasy points, which was the basically the sixth least fantasy points out of all offenses. But it's all up to this next guy too. And it's Joe Mixon. Is this the year? Is this finally the year Joe Mixon turns into an RB1 that we've been waiting for? And some people think so. He's one of the most heavily used backs in the NFL Evident by his 82% of running back touches and 24.2 touches per game. Those are both top five numbers now with Giovanni Bernard gone and no one getting drafted as a running back in in their draft. They didn't draft any running backs is what I'm saying. That volume is probably going to go up and he could be a back end running back one. We still have to see the Oklahoma boomer sooner was definitely someone that we could, you know, Someone that everyone could kind of cling to and say, oh, yeah, he has a potential. He's, you know, he's going to have uh, he's going to have the full workload without Giovanni Bernard. He has the quarterback in Joe Mixon. But what about the line? That line, they were 27th in total sacks allowed, which shows that the line completely crumbles around them. They were 30th in third down percentage, which means they're not going to get the ball, push the ball too much. And they're 28th in first downs. They weren't moving the chains. They weren't able to keep continuing to move the chains. <laughs> they can't score red zone, touch, red zone touchdowns. They're 29th. Hopefully all of that is solved by a mixture of Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon running the ball when he was in the game. He was one of the better running backs, but he had 140-point fantasy game too. But it's all down to the number five pick out of LSU. Jamar Chase, one of the best wide receiver prospects we have seen. Could he be this year's Jeffers, Justin Jefferson? It is very possible. Ugh, and it's very likely he will be competing with targets from some pretty good pass catchers, T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, as they both will be great. But I individually see him scoring 14 to 16 fantasy points a game. All of them have wide receiver three upside, but I see Jamar Chase with the highest upside. And that takes away from T. Higgins a little bit, but T. Higgins has always been a, a PPR guy. He's going to be a six catches, 70 yards guy, 12 fantasy points, 13 fantasy points. Like I said, PPR is the best league. The only bright spot for the Cincinnati Bengals is that they rushed. They had the most, the highest thing that they had was rush attempts and pass attempts. And that's just because they're on the field a lot because their defense is a bottom five in the NFL. So the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be on the field a lot. Joe Burrow is going to have to captain this team to be at least a top 15 offense. He has the weapons. Jamar Chase, 20 touchdowns, over 1,700 yards in his senior year with Joe Burrow. 
his junior year with Joe Burrow that won the national championship. Tyler Boyd still caught over 800 receiving yards last year. T. Higgins still had over 900 receiving yards last year. They got rid of A.J. Green, who was probably a distraction because you know how great A.J. Green was in his prime. Multiple thousand-yard receiving seasons, um, multiple seasons with 10-plus touchdowns, Andy Dalton's number one weapon, the best Bengals receiver probably in his prime of all time, next to Chad Johnson, Chad Ochocinco, but, but he's old, injured, hurt. They got rid of that. Joe Burrow's the new. They have Jamar Chase to be his boy to make him happy because that's what he wanted. Obviously, if they did, if they if he didn't want Jamar Chase that bad, they would have got a Penny Sewell from Oregon, right tackle or left tackle out of Oregon, and they would have built around that line more. But they said no. We want to get the fantasy value. We want Ryan to win a fantasy championship. We want you guys to win a fantasy championship. And I know it's hard to believe in the Bengals, but believe if you want someone, get Joe Burrow really, really late, rounds 14 through 16. Jamar Chase, first six rounds. T. Higgins, first six rounds. Tyler Boyd in the 8 through 10 round. I like them a lot. No tight ends am I going to talk about for the Bengals because don't draft any Bengals tight ends. Drew Sample, no. Once again, thank you for listening to the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Just gave you my preview, went over the quarterback pyramid, and went over some NFL news. Love you guys. Remember to like, share, and subscribe us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I don't know why I keep talking randomly like this, but I have a lot of voices in my head, and they're telling me we're going to win a fantasy championship. Thank you again, and have a good night. We'll be back next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program